On this week's Tuesday Talk, Steve will be talking about video and photography tips and some of his favorite video photography YouTube channels. Regarding YouTube, I don't watch a lot of those anymore, though I did in the past. If I had to come up with my top two, number one would be Thomas Heaton. He lives in um, the UK and he travels all around that area. Really interesting, high quality videos. Now he's sponsored now by, by such and such. So he's really big on YouTube. So that would be my number one. My number two would probably be a guy named Joshua Cripps. He's a, he's a very interesting photographer. He likes to be funny. He likes to, he's, he's not, he's really, I, I think he and I would get along quite well if we ever met. I'll just put it that way. You, you could probably put the pieces together yourself. But still, very interesting videos and enjoyable to watch. Now, regarding like photography tips and things like that, I think my number one tip is you don't have to have expensive equipment to get really good shots. I don't care what you're shooting, landscapes, nature, portraits, whatever. You don't need to spend five grand on a camera system to get good shots shots. Everything that you see from the videos uh, that we put out and the photography is taken with maybe $1,500 worth of equipment and quite honestly you don't even need that. I have the Sony a6300 that we're recording on right now along with the Sony 18-105 to lens which is image stabilized so I can hand hold it lower light. Really those two pieces of equipment that's all I really need. I do have a telephoto now. I have a macro lens for some of the specialty type work, um, but those are all manual focus lenses anyway. Um, I guess the only one exception is if you're a photojournalist and you are out in the middle of the sand and, and I mean your camera's getting hit, it's being knocked around, it's being dropped in the water, um, or you need really fast lenses to, to stop that action if you if you photograph sports, for example. Those would be the only exceptions that I could think of where more expensive equipment, you're going to get the more rugged camera bodies and the faster lenses so you can actually take those photos that you need for the newspaper, magazine, or whatever. But if you're at that level, you probably know the equipment that you need, so you don't really have to give much advice there. And I don't do that type of photography anyway. Um, one thing that I like to do is I like to look at photos that I want to take. That really gives me a lot of inspiration, a lot of ideas, um, sometimes you know, different angles that I may not have thought of before. So getting down on the ground or finding something that, that I can climb up on and get a shot from above, all that kind of creativity. Um, I, I don't always have it every time I go outside, but looking at photos from photographers that I like and the types of shots that I like to take, that really helps me to um, get some ideas and stay inspired and motivated uh, to go out there with my camera and just see what I can get. Um, let's see, I guess... B-roll. B-roll. I guess when you're taking video, B-roll are those shots, the, the video clips that run over top of the main sequence and the audio so the audio doesn't change. It's just the B-roll video that you watch while somebody's talking. We do that a lot in some of our uh, hiking videos and things like that. Don't do that in the Tuesday Talks. <laughs> but uh, a, a lot of videos we do do that. And I like to shoot B-roll now in slow-mo. Um, I think that really helps with the, I guess, the atmosphere or the feel of the, the B-roll video. And you could see it a little bit more clearly, I think, it act, and it takes a little bit longer to run that video. So I, quite frankly, get more seconds out of the same uh, length of video because it's slow-mo and it takes longer to, to watch it. So that that's a little trick that I like to use. And quite frankly, I think slow-mo is, is pretty cool to watch anyway. So I personally like that from a B-roll perspective, though it's certainly not required. I'm going to chime in real quick here. When we got the new camera this year, um, we got a Canon, what's the camera we got? Oh, um, G7X Mark yeah. II is our handheld vlogging camera. Yes, so we got that so that I can contribute a little bit more to the videos. And so while that we use for vlogging, I will also try to contribute to some B-roll shots. And I have to honestly say, I don't really know what I'm doing. And so I just try <laughs> random things. And sometimes those random things make it into the video because they turn out cool. And so if you're trying this for the first time, 
try random stuff like put it down hold it upside down put it through grass uh look at weird shots move it behind one thing in front of another thing uh try zooming in and zooming like all sorts of different random things he probably goes through this video and is like what was she doing but sometimes it's good stuff i mean no i never have because the b-roll is where you can be creative right absolutely <laughs> and you're not hi penny you're not getting film developed so it's digital so just I mean, you have no idea what's going to come out good and what's not. I think, I mean, I have this shot set up in, in, in my head. I get out there, I do it, I put myself in the right position, and it's crap. But then the very next shot, I I just kind of point the camera somewhere and take it, and it's one of the most beautiful shots I've ever taken. You just have no idea what's going to turn out right sometimes. So the more you take, the more, um, I guess, the more of a possibility that you're going to get what you're looking for. Uh, so, yes, snap, snap, snap. As much as you can. Yep. That's it. That's yeah. That's it. Should I wrap it up? I think you're. Uh, I think you're good to uh, wrap it up for okay. this Tuesday talk. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you have comments or questions regarding photography, photography or videography, please leave them in the comments below. And oh, well, one more. Sorry. Shoot in manual, just for fun. Go out there, get your aperture, get your shutter speed. Don't let the camera do everything for you all the time. I really like to shoot an aperture priority a lot of the time when I'm just shooting regular video because I like to control the depth of field, how much you're seeing in the background. So those kinds of things as you play around with that, that really gets you a little bit more creative with your photography and it gets you thinking about each shot before you just take it. So you're not just holding the camera up to something and snapping and you have no idea what the setting is. But if you, if you go a little bit slower, take a step back, set your camera to full manual, and adjust the uh, settings, the shutter speed, the priority, and your ISO separately, um, and that'll come in time. You don't necessarily ha have to do that right off the bat, especially if you don't know what I just said. <laughs> um, but the more you do it, the easier that's going to be, the more you're going to understand it. And quite frankly, the more fun you're probably going to have. Okay, now that's it. Perfect. If you liked this Tuesday talk, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, because then you'll get to see some of the awesome photography and videography this one does. And uh, we will see you next time. That's right. Bye, Bye. guys.